welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here, and in this video, I'm going to be divulging yet more secrets of how to paint the colour scheme for my Death Guard army, the Drowned Plague. Okay, thank you very, very much for joining me today, whoever you are, I sincerely hope you're well. Uh, welcome to part three of Painting the Drowned Plague, the seven part painting series where I show you all the different methods and secrets, tips and tricks for painting the deep sea nautical colour scheme for my Death Guard army, the Drowned Plague. We've got a model here, this is a gut rot spume, so um, we've already looked at the how to paint the drowned power armour and the rusted corroded metallics. So, that was episodes one and two. Uh, got a really fun one for you today, though. We're going to be looking at how to do the drowned flesh. So that's uh, it's, it's pretty simple actually, um, but really great fun. It's a couple of base colours and then a load of different washes. Um, and we're also going to be looking at how to do all the pus-ridden poxy bits too. All those, all those lovely juicy, juicy bits. We're going to get started very shortly. Uh, show you what paints we need. So. Um, it's cold and lonely here in Winter Wizard's Frozen Fortress, um, but it's a beautiful morning and uh, I've got a nice cup of coffee. And Dimu, my Norwegian troll, joins me as always. So uh, why don't you make yourselves comfortable, get a nice drink or something. This is, this is going to be nice, it's just going to be relaxed, we'll do a bit of painting and I've got a few things to chat about along the way. Alright then, so here we go, so let's have a look at some paints. So. Um, for the flesh, we're going to give a nice base coat of Rakarth flesh. And then we're going to layer that with some Pallid Witch flesh. That's, um, that's, the, that's the general base, two colours, and then we've got tons of washes to play with. So this is, this is where the fun comes in. So at first we're going to do a nice uh, Ethonian camo shade, followed by Colia green shade. And then after that, we're gonna we're gonna go back to the pallid witch flesh, do a little highlight, and bring out some of the brightness of the flesh again. And then we've got uh, then we're gonna introduce some more washes, some drinky violet, all the sort of bruised areas, Carabeg crimson. This is for all the um, all the really sore bits. So that's uh, that's the main colours that we need for the flesh. And then uh, for all the juicy poxy bits as well, uh, we've gonna. Start with some Tau Light Okra, followed by some Flash Gets Yellow, a bit of highlights on there. Uh, we're going to wash those with Seraphim Sepia, and we can also, I've also got some Lamenta's Yellow here, which is a lovely glaze, so just to help bring out some of those yellowy infected areas. Um, that I think is all the paints that we're going to need. So you could probably get away if you're a bit if you don't own all of these if you're a bit tight on um, cash at the moment. Uh, you could probably get away without the yellow, without the Lamenters yellow. You could probably get away without um, the camo shade, and um, you could maybe get away without the violet. But it's entirely up to you. This is this is just my method. This is how I do things. Um, but you know you can swap these colours around, drop them in, add some more as much as you like. Here we are then, so zoomed in, we're going to get started. I've got the Rakar Flesh here. I've, um, I've also seen, started to see the, um, started to see the benefit in um, having the model sat on something like this. This is just a, um, it's just a, um, a cap, a top for a can of spray. When you're trying to keep the model still, having something just really sturdy to hold on to, you're not actually holding the model itself, which can be a bit fiddly. Your hands are a bit shaky. Having a nice sturdy thing for both your hands to sort of hold on to. For your brush to just do the work by itself. Starting to see the benefit of this. So the wreck our flesh here, we'll get this open. Uh, stick it down with a bit of blue tech. Uh, very handy little tip, for, uh, especially for washes. Uh, I'm not an angry wizard, but uh, I've certainly swore Ross's teeth at a few 
a few pots of wash being knocked over. So all the lovely flesh bits, it's, uh, it's everywhere really, there's all on his legs here, bits on his legs just above the armour, there's uh, all around his back and his neck and all under his arm here, stomach, bits in the legs there. We've got these severed heads to do as well, so we can paint those in with a rack of flesh as well. Let's load up the brush. Seems to be a nice consistency already, this paint. I've, uh, as I said, I do tend to thin the paints in the pot. Just adding a little bit with a finger, adding a bit of water to them, shaking them up. They should be nice and smooth. Here we are then, so I'm going to start applying this. It's been really careful around all the, uh, all the metallic bits that we've already done. Trying to do a nice smooth layer of this. Really lovely colour, actually, this uh, Rakar flesh. It's a uh, sort of sickly sickly fleshy colours, it's a really great starting point. You're working that around all those little details, poking it in the gaps there. This is the base colour so we want it to get everywhere. Nice strong dark start. And you got these bits of flesh which are um, they're like hooked onto the um, hooked onto the rings, so you can pick those out as well. Just like that. And all those details. It doesn't really matter if you get it on the straps. And the buckles, they're, they're small, we can always pick those out again later. At a later date. But I would be really careful with the, I see it got a bit on the metal there. Let's wipe that off. I'm just poking this under the face mask. Trying to be really careful of that power armor that we've already done. Let's twist him around. Just gently, with the flat of the brush, just poking that in, working that in. More around the back of his neck there. And uh, on the top of his head as well. And where the uh, face mask is, it uh, uh, cuts off. And Fill that in. There's a strap on the back of his head as well, but we can just go over that as well, no problem. And all the uh, the poxy lumps as well, all these pustules and things, we can they can get a nice coat as well, uh, just for a start. So um, I'm going to carry on with this, and we'll come back when I've done. Okay, so the uh, rack off flesh is uh, almost dry. I've actually gone back and done a second coat on it as well just to make that nice and strong and then you see that all under his arm here tops of his legs there uh, on the forearm and the hand and uh, he's got this like a uh, little side gob in here amongst all the tentacles in there so uh, filled that in as well and um, so we're gonna just make sure that that's fully dry and then we're gonna move on to the pallid witch flesh so the rack our flesh is nice and dry, we're going to move on now to the pallid witch flesh. Is that a good shake? You know. So this is going to be for all the all the raised all the raised edges. So uh, we're going to layer this uh, all the raised details. Um, just wanted to point out that 
uh, where the tentacles are. There's uh, like these little stringy bits of flesh which are sort of still latched onto the tentacles. Don't forget to pick those out as well. So, so the trick with layering, it's you're not painting over every inch of the colour that you've just painted. Unless it's a really flat surface and then maybe that is what you're doing. But something like this, something that's got lots of detail, lots of dynamic to it. Make sure that's nice and thin. You really the the, the trick the trick is you're you're picking out the, the raised areas, and you're leaving all the indents, all the recessed areas. You're leaving all that nice and dark in the colour before. Do you see that? So I've I painted over the top sharp edges, all the top, and in that hole there, which I did paint with Rakar flesh. I'm not painting over that. I'm not painting that again. That that stays the dark colour. And that's the sort of trick. There's something, it seems kind of obvious to us, uh, maybe, to, to those of you who have you know, been doing this a while. But uh, when I started learning, um, nobody really explained that properly to me. And, uh, so I was always getting a bit confused. Why are we, uh, why are we putting paint colours over colours that we've just painted? And, uh, just covering up then colours. And of course layer paints, they are slightly more transparent, so you do get the colours underneath them kind of singing through a bit, giving different effects, strengthening different strains of colour. But that wasn't obvious to me at first, so I just wanted to point that out, try and explain that the best I could. Um, like every video that I'm doing in this Painting the Drowned Plague series, I want to include a little topic of discussion. This gives me something to talk about, something to do. I don't really have anybody to talk to here in the Frozen Fortress, except Dimu, of course, my little troll. And the topic of discussion for today is going to be learning to paint. Learning to paint. And we're going to get on with that in a, not quite, not just yet, in a little bit. And now I'm going to just work this around and all those raised areas. Layering this up. So, like on the folds on his stomach there. I'm not going right into the right into all the gaps. Leave a little bit of shade in there. And where his stomach is, just the very, the very bottom, where his gut sits on his. On his belt. I'm not going right into that gap, just leaving that slightly darker right in the gap. And with layering, always make sure the paint is nice and thin. Not watery. Doesn't want to be like a wash. But thin. Good consistency so that it runs off the brush but still with control. You control the paint, the paint doesn't control you. <laughs> I don't know. That sounded better in my head. So, this side gob here, that's what I'm going to call it. Because it's quite dark in there, I'm just going to paint the just the bits that you can see. I'm not going to go right into the gaps like I did when I was putting the rack off flesh there. Keep that nice and shaded. And at the moment, it doesn't really matter if I'm getting it on on the teeth or the tentacles. We're actually going to use rack off flesh for um, 
to start the tentacles and the leather straps anyway, so if you was a bit messy with that earlier, that doesn't matter. So that's most of the front there. Mm, I'm hoping you can see. So a good bit to show you. It's in that neck area there. It's a good fold in there. No creases. So the indented crease is still nice and dark. There's a sort of raised muscular area, musclier areas. Are the lighter colour, the lighter tone. All right, so we carried on here and uh, worked my way around. Picked, done all that highlighting with the pallid witch flesh. Um, all his bits in his legs and uh, on his arm there. And his fingers and his hand um, all around and the severed heads here done those as well and um, so once that's nice and dry we're gonna start um, gonna start bringing out the washes and that's where the fun begins so that's the pallid witch flesh all nice and dry now and uh, we're gonna bring out the first wash here got my uh, trusty wash brush the first one we're going to use is a Thonian camera shade. So we're going to give it a nice, nice layer of green first. Nice and nerdly. Uh, maybe you've seen this trick before. I've got a little, uh, just a little, um, little brush head. They come with a little plastic cover that comes with when you buy a brush. Just pop that in there and that keeps that open. I'm definitely seeing the uh, the benefit of this as well. I am finding it easier to hold on to the model, keep it nice and still. Um, I've, uh, I know you, you can buy them from Games Workshop, uh, I know, but uh, I've just got a um, little cap from a can of spray here, a bit of blue tack, stick it down. Also got, I can show you this one I've got, um, vitamin tub. <laughs> So it's anything really that you could find around the house, something that you can hold on to. Uh, again, a bit of blue tank. It's a space wolf on there. So there we are then. So the camo, it's the Athlonian camo shade. I'll load up the brush with some of this. It's going to be the nice, the first layer. Just going to crack that in all those, all over the skin, working that into the recessed areas. It's really starting to build up the shade. So topic of discussion, learning to paint. It's always quite intimidating, uh, learning a new hobby. I, I certainly was intimidated by the idea of uh, painting a little, little plastic man again. Um, didn't know if I'd be any good at it. Um, but to be honest, with a few tricks, a bit of patience, a bit of practice, it's not as hard as it as it might seem. You can you can get really really great results without a huge amount of effort. without a huge amount of skill required just takes a bit of knowledge a bit of practice a bit of patience you don't need expensive brushes you don't need them at all something that works you don't need to buy Citadel expensive paints. Some people would tell you not to. Anyway. There's plenty of great painting companies out there selling great miniature paints. At a cheaper rate. I don't know, I um I went for Citadel just because it was familiar and uh Games Workshop, they do all the uh, all the fantastic tutorials that they do. 
and obviously they use all their own paints so if I wanted to replicate some of the things that they were doing then I just found it easier to, uh, to buy the same paint that was it really and um, I've said before I really like City Little Paints I'm not saying that they're the best but they work for me it's the results that sh it's the results that matter One of the reasons why I went for Death Guard first was um, I kind of thought, well, if my painting's not that great and if it's a bit messy, then maybe it's, uh, maybe I can just, uh, maybe it won't look too bad because it'll just blend in with the rotten, the rottenness. Uh, severed head there. I'm sort of going for the skin, but the heads, they've got some hair on them as well, so, um, Maybe put a bit of this green on the hair. That's fine, no problem. Just go back and do the other one. Not forgetting his side gob. Dimu tells me that is that is a technical term for any uh, external abdominal peripheral oral cavity it was really important to make sure that the uh, pallid witch flesh was perfectly dry before you start adding this otherwise that, one, that, that makes it very messy just give it plenty of time be patient mm. you can always give it a quick blast with a hairdryer as well And again, before we add another wash, I'm going to let this fully dry. That's uh, worked up a nice greeny tint to the skin. Looks really good. So we'll let that dry. Okay, so the uh, Sony camera shade is nice and dry. We're going to move on to the next wash now, and that is going to be it's going to be the Colia green shade. This is going to enhance. Uh, the greeniness but it's also gonna bring out some lovely blue to it as well it has to be one of my favorite washes this it's uh, it's really really nice so exactly the same everywhere we stuck the uh, camera shade we're gonna put a layer of this on now so we've added all the uh, Kerlian green shade now that's uh, really making sure that I'm working it into all those recess areas Really making those nice and dark. Let's just uh, change the colour again. It's giving it sort of bluey green, dank and nasty feel to it. Really nice. Um, it has toned uh, it has toned it down very dark at the moment though. So what we're going to do? We're going to we're going to brighten it up a bit. We're going to bring back the pallid witch flesh. Now on a large model what I would normally do is I would, uh, or a slightly bigger model, I would uh, probably dry brush this. Uh, all the pox walkers, uh, there's not a huge amount of um, armour and other things covering up that skin. There's quite a lot of wide areas of skin so I would probably dry brush them as well. Uh, it might be a little tricky to dry brush this guy at the moment uh, considering that we've already done all the power armour and the uh, rusted metallics. Um, but we can have a go or what we might just do is just grab a little layer brush just do very thin little layers of the pallid witch flesh uh, and we're going to pick and choose where we're going to do that so I'm going to put this going to make sure this is nice and dry and then I'll, I'll show you what I mean All right, uh, so we're going to go for it here uh, pallid witch flesh I've got a, um, it's a sort of base brush here it's, uh, it's that sort of um, Strange shape, but uh, it's, it's a nice shape for um, dry brushing actually. You can get quite accurate with it. So we'll give this a go. So the Pallid Witch Flesh. And scrub that into the brush. Dry the brush out. It shouldn't be wet at all. Working that into the bristles. Yeah, so nice and lightly at first. Building it up.
All this is going to do is just going to lighten up the skin. Give it a bit more of a skinny tone. The washes have uh, darkened it down quite a lot. We don't want to go mad with this, just a... Uh, it's just a highlight, just to lighten everything up. It also gives us a nice... Uh, Nice foundation to work with when we start introducing some of the other washes, the uh, Tricky Violet, Caribou Crimson. Just trying to be really careful not to get this on the, uh, on the armour, the metallic bits that we've already done. I'm just aiming for the, for the, the high definition bits, sharp edges, the raised areas. It's going pretty nicely. Those nice uh, sharp bits that are reaching out onto the tentacles. So just take your time, be careful. And, uh, and all these little areas that I can't quite get to for fear of getting it on the armour. Uh, just drop down to a little layer brush. And just carefully pick those out. Yeah, so I'll show you here. I'll uh, just got a little fine detail brush. Now, uh, the dry brush is a very delicate, it's a very delicate highlight. So if you're going to be layering the paint on directly, like so, you want it to be really nice and thin, really thin, nice and transparent. So the washes, the colour that we've built up, is going to come through. And I'm just going to really carefully pick and choose where I put this, just on the really sharpest points. And there and there. Um, on his hand, on the fingers, that'll be a good place. But we don't want to be covering up all that lovely wash work that we've done. We're just this is just just to help bring out the detail, just to lighten things up a bit as well. A bit messy there. Cool. If you do go a bit heavy, just put a little bit of wash back on it. I'll sort it out. Um, okay, and then you can get in all those gaps that you couldn't quite get the, and then you can get in all those gaps that you couldn't quite get the dry brush into, so like there. I'm just going to carry on picking out a couple of little bits, make, we'll make sure it's dry and then we'll move on. So that's the Pallid Witch Flesh, all nice and dry and done now. Um, just really brightens everything up, uh, helps to bring out all those all those details. Uh, the greeny blue flesh is quite, quite dark and dank on its own, so this just helps to make everything everything pop and gives us a good foundation for starting the uh, the more nastier shades or the uh, all the sore bits and the juicy bits and the poxy bits so we're going to move on to that now we're going to start with uh, the drooky violet here we are then so the drooky violet so this is going to be all the areas that you feel like are going to be bruised bruised and sore nasty and infected You'll see. So we're going to start with this. So I'm thinking all these, where all these craters are, all these indents bits, where the bones have popped out, where the tentacles have erupted, um, around the pox, definitely this side gob, imagine that's a little bit tender. Um, where the armour is maybe sitting all those bits where you think like soreness and bruising, especially bruising, might have started to form. We're going to go around, start very lightly. Just got a little layer brush here. Just lightly start working some of that up. So I'm going to start, I'll start on his back here. So where these tentacles have popped out, you have a nice layer of purple around those. And these bones where they've erupted. 
all these epoxy bits that we haven't filled in yet just around there nice and lightly you can always add more always add more So yeah, topic of discussion for today, for today, learning to paint. Spoke a bit about it earlier, but uh, we'll carry on. You're always going to feel intimidated, always, when starting a new hobby. Doing something maybe you're not familiar with, not, not used to. Whatever it is. Not just creative stuff. It's normal to feel intimidated. And there's nothing wrong with that. What I would say to you is take that intimidation. Don't see it as intimidation. See it as excitement. Excitement for learning something new. Yes, you, maybe you don't have a clue what you're doing right at first. But you will. It's all part of the process. So he's got a lovely, um, he's got a lovely, lovely, I don't know what, I don't know what to call, call it, a lovely uh, cavity right there. So just all around that, making it nice and bruised and swollen. And uh, yeah, so don't be intimidated. Well, be intimidated, but don't see it as intimidation. It's excitement. You're going to learn something new. But I really don't see why... Anybody, anybody at all, couldn't pull out some decent results with this hobby, or anything really. You can do anything you like, with a bit of patience, a bit of hard work, you can do whatever you like. But with regards to painting, except the first things you paint may not be that great but you don't need me to tell you that every, every, every whatever you're doing whether it's golf or playing an instrument driving a car first time you do it won't be that great but it'll only get better. And uh, in uh, painting, it's really tempting to. It's really tempting to want to strip models, strip all the paint off, start again. And I have done that myself. I have done that myself. If you feel like you've really. If you feel really unhappy with it, if you've really messed it up and you really want to try it again. But I won't get into the habit of doing it. I would suggest um, do it if you really, really feel ne feel the need to. But um, there is there's got to come to a point where those particular models they've got to be done and just accept that maybe they're not your best work. Move on best way to improve at painting is to just do it I don't mean I don't mean that to sound dismissive or patronizing nothing like that but you've got to do it you just got to have a go you got to jump in you got to try just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and the more you do it the better you'll get you'll work things out YouTube is your friend. You've got tons and tons of resources on there. Just watch videos. Watch people do it. Watch people paint. Watch and watch. Listen to people. See how they do things. But don't take everything that everybody says as canon, as rule. Listen to what people say. And see if it works for you. And with regards to... Uh, the first models that you paint maybe not looking so good. You know, every model looks different when it gets on the tabletop anyway. And most of the time, unless you're painting for, unless you want to be painting for display pieces, that's not what I'm about at all, but uh, unless you want to be 
glass cabinet displaying these models well really you just want them to look good on the tabletop and these models when you look at them close up they're going to look different when you're looking at them from a meter away when they're on the table look at it from a meter away how does it look most of the time it will look better than you think it does and uh, models always look better when there's lots of them as well you got a nice big army you start picking that all the individual models maybe yeah maybe it's a bit scruffy maybe it's not your best work but you get a big model big selection of models all together and they just look great it looks great on the table and that's why that's the important thing if you ask me so that's pretty much all the um, all the Druki Violet there that I want to do I think working up those really nice nasty bruised areas so we're going to let that dry nice and fully and then we'll move on to move on to the Caraba Crimson so that's the Druki Violet all nice and dry all the bruised areas we're going to move on to the Caraba Crimson so all the areas that you think are going to be extra sore now really sore, really infected, really nasty the bruising is kind of like the sort of outer area or where something's where something's been aggravated or sore and this is going to be the sort of inner areas so for example right where the bones have stuck out put a bit of the crimson there right and all these really nasty sore bits where the tentacles have been popping out all those bits make it nice and sore this big crater in his stomach here I'm going to really fill that in with this really sort of flood that in make that nasty and then sort of work it outwards as well just around the edges so you've got a sort of nice blend between the the pink in the middle the sort of pink on the outskirts which then blends into the sort of more bruisedy bruisey purpley areas got this bone here around the other side there where the bones are but this is already subjective have fun with it just pick and choose where you want to put this yeah so learning to paint get stuck in be excited have a go watch lots of videos listen to lots of people look at lots of pictures try things out don't be afraid to mess things up start again if you really really must but let yourself move on but I really think, um, I really think possibly the most important thing um, for, um, you know, developing your painting skills, becoming a better painter, if you like, I really feel like the most important thing that I've learned is about how you treat your paints. I really do. Like, um, Thinning your paints, thin coats, smooth, smooth consistency, lovely, multiple thin coats, really elevates the look of a model. If you really, if you look after your paints, if you, if you thin them appropriately, really take your time, put smooth coats on, build up the layers, rather than don't be impatient don't slap loads of paint on just because you want it done the more time you put in the more patience I don't mean you have to take forever but the more patience you give it it really shows it really shows on the model I've seen it in my own stuff yeah I go back and look at my my old some of the very first Death Guard models I painted 
and sure they're a bit scruffy in places maybe not as neat as I might be now because you get better at being neater of course that, that's an aspect but you can tell the paint is thicker it's blottier but you can tell so I would really really suggest and I think that just comes with experience but I'd really really suggest practicing using your paints thinning them getting that good consistency building up layers slowly I think if you really put the effort into that you'll re and you and you put the time in as well I think you'll really start to notice the difference in your own work and then of course there's all the different suggestions and color techniques and um, all the layering, the dry brushing, the washing, edge highlights, details and all those bits there's that to learn as well but there's an absolute storm of resources on YouTube for all of that so this is looking good um, there's a lot of soreness around here but there's a, he's, he's a mess quite frankly his, uh, his stomach so uh, it only makes sense that it'll be quite sore but you can sort of once this is dry you can build up layers that you want to be sore add a little bit more of the crimson but this is looking pretty good and uh, so we're gonna let this dry and then we'll go on to the next step yeah so we're just waiting for that to dry um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to uh, some slightly more solid paints and uh, we're going to start picking out some of the um, some of the poxy pustules all those big bits so that's going to really give this a nice uh, a nice little point of interest as well so we're going to start with towel light ochre so just make your way around the model pick out all those bits so that was the uh, topic of discussion today, learning to paint. Uh, I'd really love to see some of your own thoughts and then opinions in the comment section below. And if you've got any suggestions for uh, topics you'd like to hear, yeah, hear discussed. I'd love to see some suggestions down there as well. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, there's one big one there. So just work your way around. So a few more here. Find all those bits. Fill those in. So those uh, those bits are nice and dry now, just about. And uh, we've given them a second coat uh, just to make that colour nice and solid. Um, so we're going to put that away and the next thing we're going to do is going to bring out the flash gets yellow uh, for a bit of a highlight on those so you're going to sort of pick the highest sort of curved edge of the pus ball if you like just to do a sort of line of this yellow just where maybe the light would hit like so there we are let's just help to bring those out and we're going to wash those or we'll blend the uh, yellow and the orange together a bit more so we'll do that next uh, need the seraphim sepia so we're really not far off at all now, so uh, we've got the Seraphim sepia here. Let's take that down. So we're going to wash those, um, those nasty pus balls. Have a bit of this. Just to pile a bit of that on. Getting all the edges around the, the balls as well. Around these poxy bits. I mean, there's a nice good wash of this. That'll help to darken them down as well. It adds a bit of a brownness to them as well. Makes them sort of look filthy and nasty. And 
And on the the large ones like this, you can uh, you can do a couple of couple of coats of this wash. Yeah. And that's that. So uh, let that dry. I might add another little wash once it's dried up a bit. But yeah. So the Seraphim CPO is now nice and dry. Uh, I built it up a bit more on the uh, on the larger poxy ball there. Um, just to make sure that it's not too bright. Um, it's nice to have these uh, as a bit of a contrast to the rest of the um, rest of the skin and things, but uh, you don't want too bright. Uh, it's supposed to be organic. Uh, but the last thing we're going to do now is uh, and you don't have to do this, but I like to. It's um, got the Lamentas Yellow glaze. This is just going to add a really subtle yellowy effect. So I'm going to put that on the pox balls. Just to really give them a sort of sickly feeling. And what I'm also going to do with this is just around the skin. The bits of the skin around these balls. Around these pox bits. Put a little bit of this yellow on there as well. It doesn't look like much at first, but when it dries, you know, it's going to give the whole area, the ball itself, and the skin, a really sort of infected, nasty feel. See the one at the top there? You can already see that yellow on the, uh, around the skin. Just makes the whole area look nice and infected. So we're going to let that dry and then and we're just about done. There we are then, so that's uh, that's the skin all done and dry. And I uh, just thought I'd zoom in, give you a good look at that. It's a little bit hard to see in places at the moment. Uh, there is a lot, of, a lot of silver and unpainted parts of this model still going on. But once it's all done, that should be quite a nice feature there. I really do like the, uh, the poxy bits as well. They add a nice little bit of dynamic to the model. Nice little um, contrast colour there. So that's the flesh. We started off with a base of Rakar flesh and then uh, layered that with pallid witch flesh. Then a series of washes, uh, Athonian camo shade, Curlier green shade. Uh, went back and did some more highlighting with the uh, pallid witch flesh. Some more washes, uh, Druky violet for prusing, Caribou crimson for the extra saw bits. Then for the poxy, poxy bits, we did a uh, towelite ochre for a base. Did a highlight with flash gets yellow. Wash with seraphim sepia and a, and a glaze of lamentas yellow. And we put the glaze on the skin as well to infect those areas. And that is how you paint the drowned flesh and pox for the drowned plague. There we have it then. So that was part three in uh, painting the drowned plague, where we focused in on the uh, on the drowned flesh and all the pox. Um, next episode, we're going to be looking at the slimy tentacles from the deep, and uh, I'm going to be talking about how to keep motivated when when painting. So I hope you'll join me for that one, and uh, hope you've enjoyed the video today as well. If you have, then a, a like and a comment would be very very much appreciated and uh, and if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the frozen fortress then uh, perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber once again thank you very very much whoever you are for joining me today I'm Winter Wizard that's Dimu and for now keep it frosty